What is up everybody, Divin here, music producer and beatmaker from Berlin. Welcome and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about something unusual, which I'm really excited about actually. That is recording vocals into machine. Yes, you've heard me, I'm gonna repeat that. Recording vocals into machine. I'm in the middle of recording an EP with a singer who happens to be my wife. And I'm right in the middle of recording an entire lead vocal into machine. And guys, I'm gonna be honest, I love the workflow. Actually, we just started out doing that as a demo, but then it turned out so good that I actually wanted to keep the recordings and I figured, you know what? We we're gonna record the rest of the song like that. So in today's video, I wanna have you guys be part of the process. I wanna take you guys along the ride while we're recording some more vocals, show you my workflow. And as some of you might already know, the process of recording into machine is a lot different from recording into your regular DAW. So I made a little pros and cons list so that we can discuss the workflow together. If you're into beat making, lo-fi tutorials and performances, make sure to click that subscribe button. Let's dive in. All right. So for those of you guys who already know me, you guys know that I love working with machine. I got my machine Micro Mark II, probably gonna upgrade that sometime soon. And I got my machine Jam for step sequencing and other cool stuff. By the way, if you want me to make a video on how I use my machine Jam as a beat maker in my workflow, let me know in the comments. So yeah, I love working with machine. And, and one thing that I always sort of hate when I work with singers and, and rappers is that I have to record the vocals in a like in regular DAW. And I always felt like there should be a way to do that in machine. And I do record, when I record guitars, I use my, I use the looper all the time, the sampling mode. So as I already mentioned in the beginning of the video, I just sort of happened to record a demo, which turned out to be so good that I wanted to use it as the lead vocal into machine, into the sampling mode. And um, I'll show you guys how I did that. All right, so the first thing you want to do is create a new group and opening up the sampler. For that, we can click the sampling button here or on the screen, you can push this little thing here. This little squiggly line, this little wave line. So what we see now is the sampling view. And first thing we want to do now is edit our settings down here. So. I'm gonna click so on source and I'm gonna choose external mono because I wanna record only from one input. In just a minute, I'm gonna plug in my mic cable into my interface. So here it's important to choose the right input from your interface. Next thing we wanna do is turn on the monitor if it's not already turned on. And then we wanna choose the right length because here's the first real big difference from recording into machine as opposed to recording into your DAW, you have to choose in beforehand how long your recording is gonna be. Sort of like, like a looper. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on four bars because I'm gonna record four bars. And then I'm just gonna open up a new pattern in which I'm gonna record. I'm gonna change the pattern length to eight bars in my machine. You can also change that by holding and dragging, dragging up here. In order to arm your pad, you first have to choose a pad. It's, by default, it's on pad number one. And you push start up here. Or if you work with a different machine or if you wanna work with the software, you push start the start button here. So now your machine is waiting for you and is ready when you are. So all you gotta do is push record up here or on the record button which is exactly what we're gonna do now. So, I brought a singer here who happens to be my wife. Say hello to Jenny. By the way, we're in the process of recording her first EP, so stay tuned for that. And also I'm gonna put a link to her latest single, which I happen to have produced and filmed the video for into the description. So enjoy watching that. Are you ready? I'm ready. Nice. And before we forget that, let's plug the mic into the interface, shall we? Okay. 
Also, don't forget to switch off your speakers before you start recording. Also super important to supply your singer with enough tea and make sure that your little puppy is staying in the same place, not walking around or drinking water in between. So now I'm gonna hit record and it's gonna record four bars. I really like this take. Good job. But I think we could do think that we... We could... Uh, help me. I think we could redo the first line, don't you? Yes, that would be an excellent idea. Thank you very much. So just like any other actual DAW, machine has the function of recording multiple takes. Just take a look here at the screen and you're gonna see this little thumbnail here. And you're gonna see what happens if we record another take, just in a second. So next up, we're gonna record the second verse. I'll let you be part of that too, of course. See you in a bit. And now to record another part of the song, I'm just gonna push another pad and we're gonna do the same thing over again. So push start and record. One more important lesson right in between recordings, always remember to push start. Because being a producer who works a lot with MIDI instruments, I'm very used to just pushing record and then I'm gonna let her sing and then it's gonna be all in vain and she's gonna sing the best take of her life and not recording it. So always make sure to push start in beforehand. This, this is your best friend. This one here. This is your friend. Uh, here. <laughs> Repeat that? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, as she was just saying, uh, we got the final take and uh, we gotta listen to it now because it's uh, quote unquote awesome. I am all the way. Look at us now. to insert your recording into your track all you got to do is all you got to do is create a MIDI note drag it all the way along cuz it's on ADSR mode so which basically means it'll stop right where you're going to stop so if I'll drag it all the way until only here it'll stop playing here so i recorded 5 bars so i'm just going to stretch it all the way to 5 bars and then this is my the second part of the verse which is another 5 bars did I say five? I mean four, obviously. And stretch it to, to the end of bar number eight. And there we go. Thank you so much for joining us today. And thank you so much for providing your beautiful voice. Guys, check out our music, seriously. And you guys and I are now gonna get into the pros and cons of what we just did, which is recording vocals into machine. Thanks for having me. Have fun and see you maybe on my channel. Let's get into it. Let's talk pros and cons. Let's start with the pros. So for the first time I could include the vocals while making the beat and that's actually huge. Because usually I'm making the beat, then I'm waiting for the vocals or I'm recording them. Then I'm gonna see how they work together, you know, make some changes and stuff like that. But this time I could build everything on top of each other, which is huge. It's such a good workflow. Recording directly into machine, I could build my track in a more cohesive way because I could start with some chords and drums and then add the vocal on top, which of course gives the song its main flavor and then mix that perfectly into the track right away while still working on the whole beat. Then I'm gonna add the rest of the production on top of that instead of adding the vocal to a completely finished backing track recording. So basically no more imagining what it would sound like with vocals or no more crappy phone acapella versions playing alongside the machine version. Also, I often feel like it's a little overwhelming to both me and the vocalist to go like all one man army against 30, 40, 50 instrumental tracks. So all in all, this technique of recording vocals directly into machine allows me to have more control over both the vocal and the overall mix. And it all leads to a less cluttered and more minimalistic workflow. No more exporting tracks forth and back from one DAW to the other. 
all of which leads to a more seamless workflow. Another major point to me is that I love the built-in plugins, the built-in FX, like the Reverb, the Metaverb, the Reverb Legacy, all of which I can't use in Logic. I don't know, perhaps it's like a placebo thing because I'm super biased towards machine, but I always miss having those around when working in Logic. I mean, I gotta say, I also kind of miss the Logic EQ, for example, when working with machine. So you have to weigh it against each other, but if I had to choose, I would prefer working with the, with the native, native instruments stuff. I also got to say, I love the feeling of recording samples into pads rather than into tracks. And that's probably even my favorite part because you sort of know the certain amount of bars which you're going to record before you record them. So you sort of already get your mindset on how much you're going to record how long your recording is gonna be, and it doesn't feel like an endless process. Then, for example, when I'm recording guitar samples, it always helps me a lot to focus on the moment, to focus on the now and the recording itself, because I know I have four bars, I'm gonna give it my best shot. I don't know if this makes any sense or if I'm just being plain weird about this, but if you guys have tried this out, I would love to know your opinion. Tell me about your experiences and let me know what you think in the comments below. But either way, the process here was that we've been recording vocals phrase by phrase instead of, for example, the whole verse or the whole track. So, for example, we only did one or two lines or like this today, four lines in one take. And like this, we could focus way more on the details, on the details of the voice, of the phrasing, etc. So if we just look at the facts, the results were actually better than recording in Logic. The whole thing overall feels more productive because you build the track on top of each other. So you don't have to record your playback, then you record your vocals, then you have like a whole bunch of vocals lying around which you have to tune, which you have to mix, which you have to blend into your backing track, then you have to mix the whole thing. So to me, Knowing that once I'm done with the vocals, I'm basically done because I've already mixed the vocals into the track, I've already uh, blended everything together. So to me, it's not like these two separate parts anymore, especially for me as a producer who's mainly recording his demo tracks at the moment, this makes things way more natural to me because now it doesn't really matter to me anymore if I'm recording a guitar or a piano or a vocal. By the way, how about you? Have you guys recorded any guitars or any samples into the machine? How did you guys like it? Let me know in the comments below. So before we get into the comments, I just want to say real quick, this is like every new workflow, right? I mean, I have to get used to it at the moment. So I'm not entirely sure if this really fit this specific song really well, or if I'm going to keep doing that for all the other songs that I'm going to record. For now, it still feels a little bit weird, but still, as you can tell, I'm super excited about it. But either way, getting used to a new workflow, I don't consider it as, as a con because to me, switching up my workflow is something I always consider very positive because it keeps me inspired to look at things differently, even if they're as rudimental and seemingly unshakable as recording a vocal, which I've done it with Logic Pro for like five years now. Even then, it's super important to always switch up your workflow, which is why I'm so excited about it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I give you the cons. Sometimes it feels a little clutter to record those, those little pads and not really have like a whole track to work with. Um, especially if you don't really know yet where the track's gonna go when I'm recording guitars, for example, and I'm just actually like recording random licks and I really don't know how to put them together. This could, this did turn out positive in a couple of tracks, like my song Get Up, Get Real. I didn't have any idea how to put the licks together. It just happened super randomly and I quite liked it. But I guess that's like with anything that's different from what you've been used to before, there's always ups and downs, right? So one thing where I had to do a terrible workaround was uh, when I was recording a line that started in a different part of, in between different parts of the song. So it started at the end of the verse, but it actually belonged to the pre-chorus. So since it was on a different bar, I had to actually record it into a different scene at the end of it, and I had to separate it and record only this one word and then record the rest of it separately. So that was pretty cringy. And I don't know if that's the only way to do it. So if you guys know, please help me out. I don't know how else to do it. Here's a little update on that matter. Since I've tried out some more things in the last couple of days, recording even more vocals with machine. So what you can do is when you open up your sampler, you can just choose a free length down here. So instead of choosing a certain amount of bars, you can just push free 
So whenever you have this moment where you have to record across scenes, you can just choose this one. Of course, then you will have to chop off the beginning because you'll get way more blank recording space before your actual recording starts. But yeah, problems. Um, yeah, I got nothing else to say. Guys, that was actually it for this video. This was a super funky experience for me and I'm glad I shared it with you guys. And I actually quite enjoyed it. So um, I can recommend to everybody just grab your machines, start the sampling mode and get going. It's definitely a great new experience. And I can't wait to record the next song directly into the machine. By the way, I promise you guys I'm gonna get a better screensaver until next time. Get better screensaver. Saber. Saber. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please drop a like down below and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you in the next one.